after the beautiful and glorious dual-purpose street and racing machine, the Ferrari 250 GT Berlinetta short wheelbase, Ferrari decided to replace the short wheelbase with two different sports cars. The new racer would now be the legendary 250 GTO, and for touring use, Enzo Ferrari wanted a more dedicated car for the street with the 1962 Ferrari 250 GT Lusso for luxury, or also known as the 250 GTL. The chassis used was the race-proven short wheelbase unit measuring 2,400mm or 94.5 inch from the 250 short wheelbase, making the Lusso a genuine sports car with disc brakes all around, while the suspension was still independent in the front with double wishbones and coil springs. The back end was still live with a leaf spring layout, but this rear setup was well proven by now and almost vice-free. The 250 GTL was spent by Pininfarina, then coach beer down the street from Ferrari by Scaglietti. The body panels were made out of steel, except for its doors, hood, and trunk lids, which were made out of aluminium. It received exposed upright headlights and a three-piece chrome bumper that included two extra small vertical bumper elements underlining the turning signals like a Cornetto or an ice cream if you will. This not-seen-before design layout worked surprisingly well on the Lusso's front end, innovatively breaking down the way a bumper should look time and time again. Even without the elegant recessed air entry hood scoop found on the 250 short wheelbase or the 250 California short wheelbase, the 250 Lusso still kept on adding on points for beauty, with its very elegant and glittering hood air scoop accentuated by a thin mesh metal screen and its chrome trim. This, and the fact that the 250 GT Lusso also had delicate and very thin pillars all around, and a full three-quarter rear side window that ended in a gorgeous point dripping down to follow the rear fender line, also helped to cement its beauty status. The rear was finished with a truncated cam tail and incorporated a small rear spoiler lip, which was a world's first with the GTO's more massive rear unit. Also, one round tail light on each side of the cam tail with the traditional full exhaust setup finished the job. Underlining this goddess was a set of Boani wire wheels with gearling disc brakes fitted all around, elevating this diva to the ultimate in elegance. The interior was also spectacular, and as unusual as the dress the Lusso was adorned with two main and very imposing Veglia Speedo and Ref counter dials at the center of the dashboard. Both of these dials were large in their own pods with sun visors and oriented towards the driver on a stitched leather dashboard. In front of the driver, though, were the five small gauges usually seen in the center of the dash, which included the internal fluid pressure and temperature status gauges, as well as the clock. This new out-of-the-box thinking was very artistic and broke many molds, while the flip-up chrome ashtray sat on the transmission tunnel in the middle of two leather bucket seats with ample rear space for luggage on the rear parcel shelf. The power plant was the smooth and well-proven 3-liter or 180 cubic inch Colombo V12 engine, giving 250 horse at 7,500 RPM with the help of three Weber carburetors. The engine was then mated to a non-exposed metal gate all synchronized for speed gearbox. Performance was quite good for a 2,866 pound or 1.3 ton car of a 3 liter capacity with a 0 to 62 miles per hour coming at 7 seconds and with a top speed of 143 miles per hour or 230 km per hour. The Ferrari 250 GT Lusso production run stopped in 1964 with 350 cars sold. It actually took the car collector world quite some time to recognize the purity and intricacy of its simple lines and interior making the 250 Lusso one of the top most beautiful production Ferraris ever produced.